I'm in Rochester, New York, ready to help a family. Let's take a look. Hi, we're the Potters. I'm Joy. And I'm Chris. We have four kids. Noah is 10, Ryan is seven, Jake is five, and Alexa is four. Ryan, come out of here. I was going to bed. Stupid. I don't think that I get a lot of respect from any of the kids. I asked you to go upstairs no less than six times, and you're still sitting here. They don't respect us. <clears throat> don't push me. And they don't respect the house. Don't hit the wall. Stop it. Talking back and being blatantly disrespectful. La, 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 la. Hey! Covering your ears and saying la, la, la. You don't do that stuff. That makes me very angry. Wow. This needs to change. Go to bed for the night. Discipline has been tricky, because the two of us haven't been on the same page with it. Alexa, come up here. I want to talk to them in a way that they deserve to be spoken to. Keep your darn hands off of them. He's not a brat. You're the brat. I think that his parenting style is a little old school. Hey! Get over here now! I'm a disciplinarian. I'm very strict. Mm -hmm. I do tend to do a lot of yelling. I don't think you're cute. He's loud. It can get scary. Get up and get it. I sometimes interrupt Chris and try to step in. Come what? with me. What did he do? He just kicked him in He's kidding the him back. That's what Ryan did to him first. When I was a kid, my mom didn't challenge my dad. Do not talk about your parents That again. truly is where I'm coming from. Yeah, really. And it's OK. It's just power play between the pair of them. No teamwork. My relationship with Noah is very strained. You're very careless, Noah. Strained because it always he just doesn't listen. ends up in a huge fight. Do not get Dad, I know. plugging the ear. I know what you say you would yell. And Chris is over the top. He's screaming. Kick that up now. He needs to get it under control. Oh, go, yes. oh, I do not like this. This is my life. It sucks. Ryan, I'm getting angry now. I wish that Chris would embrace parenting a little more. I don't want him to be frustrated. What, what did I just ask you to do? And angry all the time. Get in the house now. They want it to stop, and I want it to stop. I don't ever want to be faced with the decision of choosing between my husband and my kids. But I sometimes think, would it be better for us to be apart Super Nanny, we really need you more than ever right now. Hold in there, because I am on my way. Hello. Hi. Pleased to meet you. You too. Joe, come on in. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Joe. Hi. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Jake. Hi, Jake. Pleased to meet you. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, pleasure to meet you, Chris. Pleasure to meet you. This is Alexa. Hi, Alexa. Pleased to meet you. This is Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. So I'm just going to, you know, just observe and uh, hang out, really. OK. All right. right. Okay. Shortly after I arrived, Noah and Ryan vanished upstairs to play video games, but Mum had felt that they'd already played enough. So choose a different activity. That's just what we're doing. But Ryan went straight on as if Mum never said a word. Ryan. I said, turn it off. The kids do not listen to me. I'm talking to them, and they're not even looking at me. That's naughty. I asked you to turn it off. Give me the controller. Let go. Ryan. Mum was trying to make a point by taking away Ryan's game controller, but instead, she ended up in a tug of war. What are you going to do with the controller if I give it to you? I'm going to put it back where it's supposed to go. Do it right now. In the end, I gave in and didn't really follow through with what I wanted. It's not your job. I I'm your mommy. What does he mean by it's not your job? What's not your job? To tell him that he can't play it. Not only did Mum allow Ryan to keep the game controller, but she also allowed him to disrespect her. And this boy has got his mum wrapped around his finger. I'm going to go out for a little while, OK? Later on in the day, Mum went off to work, and Dad insisted that Noah tidy his bedroom. Where Mum is so soft, Dad is so extreme. What is all this? Legos. Yeah, well, you're going to clean them up. Later. Hey, get over here and pick up these Legos. Really? Go! OK, this can be taken Sometimes away. my dad gets really mad, and I don't like it. Pick up the Legos. <laughs> oh! Get back here now! 
I mean, I don't exactly blame Noah for running away. Dad's tone and the way he manhandles him, it's got to be scary for that boy. All right, I'm going to give you one chance to pick these Legos up. And if I pick them up, then they're going to be taken away. OK, well, then say goodbye to your Legos, then. Dad was getting angry by the minute, so I left him upstairs to tidy up the toys. Where's Noah? In there. Huh? In there. In there? Get out, please, from there. <laughs> no, get out. Noah, Noah, that's not safe. And when I came downstairs to see where Noah was, he was hiding in the ottoman away from his dad. And before I knew it, dad was back. He's not done with Noah yet. Noah, getting tired of you just tossing your shoes wherever you feel like it. <laughs> do you know what I want you to do right now? What would I listen to you and me? I shouldn't have to do this, but I will spell it out for you again. Get over here! Going in the garage. Get here now! You weren't told to walk away from me. Get over here! You're yelling at me. Because you don't do a single thing I ask you to do. You're disrespectful to me and your whole family. You don't come in the house and kick your shoes off and then refuse to pick them up when you're told to do so. Now get over there and pick them up. Now! Dad completely lost it. He's out of control. He scares those kids. But he doesn't scare me, and I'm going to need to talk to him. Go upstairs so I don't have to drag you upstairs and go to bed. Okay. See, I can't. So we gotta do this now. I can't, because you're gonna hurt me. No! The big mean dad will go away if you simply do the simple task you're being asked to do. Good night. A dad had asked Noah to stay in his room for the rest of the evening, but I just wanted to check on Noah to see that he was okay after such a large confrontation with dad. Do you know why your dad was angry with you tonight? So dad needs to work on how he talks to you, right? And being respectful, and you need to work on your listening skills, right? Tomorrow, I'm going to sit and I'm going to talk to your mum and dad about things that need to change. Because this isn't good, is it? Clearly, the relationship between Noah and his dad has broken, and it's going to take some hard work to get it back together again. Observing the Potter family, I'd seen Dad's temper on the rampage. Get over here! You're yelling at me. Because you don't do a single thing I ask you to do. Now! As soon as Mum got back from work, I took Dad aside to ask him if he thinks his behaviour has a huge impact on his children. I think my kids tend to overreact. Like, if I'm disciplining my son, he acts like it's the end of the world. And I think he's just trumping it up right. to try and get a reaction. Right. If I scream and cry and cower and, you know, and all this, mm -hmm. then Dad will leave me alone. I think I do a lot of things right. And I kind of want somebody to chime in and point out, really, where I think Joy's shortcomings are. If she doesn't agree with what I'm doing, she'll jump in and she'll show the children that mom and dad don't agree. That's correct. Him and mom should be on the same page. But does he really think I'm going to give him a gold star because he bullies his children? I grew up in a wonderful family. I never saw my parents argue because my mom was content to step back and let my dad rule the house. There's no way that dad can expect me to be in his corner. Before I left for the night, though, I did need to hear mom's take on the situation. They're kids, and they don't need to, to have the yelling and the, you know, the loss of temper. And I know what a wonderful person he is, or I wouldn't be with him. But I will always do what I think is right for the kids. So if at any point I ever thought that it was better for the kids for me to take them and for us to be apart, would I do it? Absolutely. She's in a desperate situation because she knows what she needs to do if things don't change, and she's scared that she's going to have to walk down that road. The stakes are incredibly big here in this family. I've seen plenty, and I can't wait for tomorrow to come because I need to sit down and have a serious conversation with the Potter family. I'm really, really anxious about the parent meeting. I know it's going to be difficult, so it's making me really uneasy. 
Let me start by telling you both that it takes a lot of courage to come to the table because some of the issues we will talk about, they're not a rosy picture. Yes. No. There are parental issues. The kids are suffering for it. And that, for me, is incredibly sad. Yeah. Let's talk about discipline, because I know that there's been much heated conversation with regards to what do we do with discipline when we see the kids being disrespectful. Right. The pair of you need to be in agreement of discipline. Right. This is not to shame or to humiliate. Discipline is to teach, and you both have to follow through on it. They don't listen. I say to Ryan, that's it, you're not going outside to play. And he says, yes, I am. And he literally walks out the front door. And then you don't follow through with the consequences that happens for not listening. And he knows that. Because you give empty threats, you have to break the mold. You have to recognize that everything you're familiar with right now has to go out the window. Because what you're familiar with now, what you're secure with right now is dysfunctional and it's breaking your family. Chris? I spoke to you in the backyard yesterday mm -hmm. when you very openly spoke about your own upbringing and that your father led the household with the decisions. Yep. Families have evolved. Parents have evolved. Has changed. Maybe that was an old-fashioned way of looking at things, but it worked. You know why it worked? Because your mother sat back and allowed your father to make those decisions. Right. It worked. What's wrong with that? Because you're not married to your mother. But I always like the result of that environment. Get over it. It's We're not them. We have different children. We are very different. I work outside of the home a lot. It's not the same, and I'm so tired of being compared to it and hearing about it. I want to focus on us, on our kids, on our situation, on us. She's trying to talk to you, and you're not listening. That breaks down relationships and creates hostility. Sorry, honey. I just wanted to change. Let's move on and talk about yourself, Chris, yes. and Noah. Your tone, your inflection, the way you are with him. You're, you're rude, and I yeah. can guarantee you what you are doing right now is breaking his spirit. I know that you love him, but I know that he doesn't feel that way. The anger, the yelling is continuous with him. You expect so much from your kids, yet you are not leading by example of showing when you are in certain situations, this is how you handle yourself. You get angry and you yell, then you wonder why they do the same. You teach them that every day. It's gonna fix it. Really, I believe this is your last chance. You're going to both step up to the plate, willing to make this work. There's a lot at stake here. Mm -hmm. You have me 100%, and I expect you both to give each other 100%. Are we in or are we out? We're in, absolutely. The discipline in this house is really all over the place because while Dad berates the kids, Mum pacifies by letting these kids walk all over her. So what I need to establish first and foremost are some great house rules. But as they were writing them down, one of the rules touched a nerve. Treat each other with respect. Will they understand well, we what we mean? Will they it. understand? We're going to have to explain it and give them an example. An example is the operative word here because you've not been very good at leading that example right. with the kids. You've lost tempers and shouting and yelling. And they turn around and say, but you don't do it. You shout at us. Yeah. But you tell us. And you tell us. And what do you say? I'm the father. Does that give you the right to talk to another human being that's demoralizing and disrespectful and then expect them to right, show the right, same respect right. to you? Well, what should I say? You, you diffuse the situation. Cut it straight off. Actually, right now, this conversation I do not appreciate. Yeah, you can't have a fight if one person refuses to fight. Correct. Bringing respect into our home, I think, is going to make all the difference for Joy and I and all the kids. There hasn't been a lot of respect in either direction up until now. So you're both happy with your rules there? Yes. Yep, yep I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right, guys. 
Can we have you all come over to the steps? Now that Mum and Dad have established the rules, I want them to present a united front as they convey the rules to the kids. Noah, what does this say? Treat everyone with respect. Do we know what that means? Yeah, to be who knows respectful? what respect means? And to listen when someone's someone. talking. It felt good to be standing side by side and, and explaining to them that these are the rules and we're going to post them in the house and this is what we want to be followed and we're going to stick with it. Sound good? Thanks, guys. Good job. Later on that afternoon, Ryan broke one of those rules. You need to listen to me and you need to come in the house. Which gave Mum the opportunity to follow through with discipline. You told him not to go out. You gave him that warning. He has to go in time out. OK. Ryan, you're in time out right now because you chose to go outside even though I asked you not to. You're going to sit here for seven minutes in time out. Set your timer for seven minutes, Joy. Mum stepped up and followed through, but by no means was it easy. Doesn't feel good, does it, giving them a timeout? No, it's hard. Why? I don't know. I, I feel bad punishing him. But how's he going to learn? Only if I show him. Oh, he was furious. It felt like he's been naughty. He needs to learn his lesson. He needs to do the timeout. He's calling mommy, and he sounds so sad. And soon enough, Ryan started to test her. Timer hasn't gone off yet. No Mommy, talking, Joy! Never no talking, just reset the arm. He was giving her a run for her money, but it was important to step up with that authority. You cannot give up. Finally, Ryan sat for seven minutes straight, but he wasn't done testing Mum. So, explain why he's been put in there. The next step is for him to apologise. If he doesn't sincerely apologise for this behaviour, then you're going to walk away for a minute and you're going to come back. OK. OK? Ryan, you're in time out because you went outside when I told you not to. Can you tell Mommy that you're sorry that you didn't listen and you went outside? OK. Can you take a deep breath and tell me you're sorry? Ah, uh, you've already asked him. And he's telling you can't, so I'm going to come back. Gonna come back. I'll come back maybe when you're ready. Okay. Go back in a minute, and then you're like, you need to tell mommy you're sorry. You didn't listen and do as you were told. Okay. He's either gonna say it or he's not. Right. If he doesn't, you obviously need more time, and then you walk away. Are you ready to say sorry? I will. You practically leapt in my arms, was squeezing me tight and whispering in my ear, "I'm sorry, mommy. I'm sorry." Sorry. Thank you, Ryan. It's not easy. But it's right, and you know what? They they will actually appreciate it. Thank you. That was OK? Yeah, it was. It was almost like saying thank you. Like, he needed that structure. He needed that discipline. He needed that from me. Dad knows that his temper is a huge issue in this family. And whilst Mum is learning to be more consistent with her discipline, Dad knows that he needs to learn how to manage his anger. Um, the reason why I brought you here to this gym is because I want you to get a grip on your anger. Oh. OK. So that you can start to eliminate this, because when you start to get frustrated and you start to get angry, then everything turns into turmoil. And we know that it's destructive in the house. So we're going to do a bit of boxing. Hi, Dom. Hey. Boxing is a great stress reliever. And it's going to be so important for Dad to do this, because proactively, he can manage his anger better. Maybe breaking a sweat, so you need to get you out of these Oh, get me out of my clothes? OK. Yeah, put you in some boxing stuff, OK? I'll Sounds take good. that. I'll take right. that one. Coach Dom was a little intimidating look He's a very strong man. I wasn't quite sure what he had in store for me. That's it. Good. Hot stone. Make believe you're touching the hot stone. There you go. Hitting the heavy bag felt good. It felt good to get out whatever was bothering you. You're not even thinking about it anymore. And you know, once you get the technique down, it's a great workout. Get it out. Dig into there. You could see he was exerting all of that energy, and he felt good for it. One, two, three, four. OK, it's enough. Okay, good, good. good, real good, real good. OK, you all right? Can we give Dad the pads? If Dad thought that the fight was over, then he was in for a bit of a shock. That's it. Good. If 
feel that? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Imagine that every time you lose it with your kids. They're getting punched because that is what's happening to them emotionally. Right. That's tough, right? Yeah, it's not fair to them. The one thing that you can't see is when people are emotionally drained. They start to withdraw. They act out. They start to use bad language. They become disrespectful. Right. An emotional punch, trust me, it is worse than that. When Joe associated the physical punch with an emotional scar, it started to hit home for me. What, you done with the punching? I'm tired. Well, you don't take no more? <laughs> no, I don't want any more. Joe's punches are definitely going to be in my mind when I catch myself saying something harsh to the kids, because at the end of the day, I don't want them to be emotionally hurt by me. I know that Dad's not completely there yet, but I'm making progress with him. Dad knows that his temper has been completely destructive for his family, and he needs to go about changing things and putting things right. And the first thing he needs to do is work on his relationship with Noah. I think it's really important that you guys just hang out and oh. have time together. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> we can do that whilst we are building the rockets. Does it? OK, Dude, there are instructions awesome. in there. I know. They were going to learn together how to fix this thing up and let it off. All right, Dad, come here. I'll give you a job to do. OK, give me a job. Assemble the rocket. Assemble the rocket, OK. Noah, he just, like, lost his mind. It's right up his alley. It's pretty cool. You put the rocket in backwards. Are you sure? I, on the other hand, was a little bit apprehensive about what am I going to bring to the table here? I vaguely remember this when I was a kid. You used to do one? Yeah, I think I was your age. I was fifth grade. Put the engine in the hole first. Perfect. The beautiful thing about this relationship right now is that the experience gave them the opportunity to talk to one another, to become closer, which is healing their relationship and putting it right back on track. What do you want to do when you grow up, Noah? Oh, engineer. An engineer? What kind of engineer would you like to be? Roller coaster. Roller coaster design engineer. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, Dad. Given some of the difficulty that Noah and I's relationship has suffered, I think it's really important that we're now getting an opportunity to spend quality time with one another. This is pretty cool, man. Oh my word! Isn't that this cool? is excellent. What do you think, Sweet. buddy? Are we ready? Do a countdown. Yes, let's do a countdown. Yeah. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Just to see how happy he was, the look on his face, and what a thrill it was for him to uh, spend this time with me. You know that uh, he had a good day. It was, it was great. Was it worth it? Was yeah. it worth coming to the park oh, with your yeah. dad? Absolutely. Yeah, for real. It was awesome to shoot off the rocket because I got to spend time with my dad. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you very much. The park was a wonderful experience, but there's something to be said when you actually admit that your behavior's been wrong as a parent and that you put it right. When you're accountable for where you've been and you take ownership from that, you can clean the slate. This little boy will grow up and know that, you know what, when he's not perfect and when he makes mistakes, guess what he can do? Admit that he's wrong. Yeah, and fix it. I thought that was a great opportunity for me to sit down with him and have a heart to heart and let him know that things I had done were wrong. I want to talk to you for a little while. <clears throat> Daddy's a little emotional. It's because I feel really bad about how I've treated you. And I was very rough on you. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that I was wrong. And I was wrong, honey. I'm sorry. I'm gonna change. So it means no more yelling. I'm gonna talk things out. Okay. My dad realizes that he was so tough on me before JoJo came and helped us. <laughs> Have a hug, buddy. Felt great to give Noah a hug. 
I want to start fresh with him, and I want him to know that I'm for real. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. Now, I needed to hear that. He needed to see his dad reaching out to him in that way. You step up and you show it now, because we can only keep saying, and saying sorry, saying sorry, saying sorry. You step up and you do what's necessary. You put the homework in. Now it's time for Dad to make good on his word. And if he doesn't control his temper, he's going to lose Noah's trust completely. There's no rocket tonight, Noah. <laughs> the next evening, Mum asked Noah to put his things away, but he started to give her attitude. But you said we could do it! I think you misunderstood that, because that was not the, that's not what was said. And it was the perfect opportunity for Dad to step back and allow Mum to take the lead when it came to discipline. Do not call us liars, Noah. I don't like that at all. Look at me when I'm talking to you. If you don't look at me, you're going to go to bed right now. OK, I want you to go to bed. I was ready. You didn't even give me a choice. You're going to go by the time I count to three. One. Oh, I'll look at you, please. No, it's over, Noah. Two. Noah, please. I'll look at you. Uh, please. Three. Oh, you need to go to bed. You need to go to bed. Oh, well, listen. No. No, 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 leave it. Let him make a decision. He has to walk himself up to his bedroom, otherwise he will lose this spaceship. Come here for a minute. What's your next move? I don't know, because I can't pick him up and bring him upstairs. Do you know what? You're going to have to learn to handle Noah. Mm -hmm. So you'll go over and you'll say to him, you've lost your spaceship, mm -hmm. OK, if he doesn't go upstairs. Are you going to listen to me and go up into your room, or I have to make the decision? Uh, I can't trust you, though. Tell me why I can't trust you. When did I? What are you talking about? Uh, this is negotiation. If Joe weren't there, it would have been the old pattern of debating with Noah and arguing with Noah as he continued to plead. I suggest right now you listen to what your mother's saying, because she's about to make a decision for you if you don't listen to her. So that means I'm going to have to take the rocket away. No, no. Come over here for a minute. But I'm not getting into a fight with him. I'm not getting into a fight. What you are going to do is take the rocket, because he's been told that he can't have the rocket, OK? If he fights you over that, then it's going to break. Over go. Go and get it. Go and get it. A lot of times, I'd be called in to discipline. And to see her stand on her own, it's, it's good to see. I'm done. <laughs> I think that mum did a fantastic job. Noah is aware that when you disrespect, there are consequences. And she took his spaceship away, and he had to go straight to bed. I'll be back in several days. Joy? I feel very nervous about Joe going. But I'm just going to try really hard to keep hearing her voice and doing the things that she's shown me. Listen, hold it down. Hold it down with your temper. I'm not going to lie. I don't want her to go. If I am not able to keep my anger in check, it'll be disastrous, really. When I first met the Potter family, they had some critical issues to deal with. Dad had no control over his temper. Get over here! And Mum was just fed up with it. They just wanted to cheat. Over the last few days, though, have they taken my advice? That's yet to be seen. Hello. Hi. Hey, Joe. Look what oh, I brought. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. So we're going to start off taking a look at bike rides. What would you rather do, like, for the next activity? Build a go-kart. Build a go-kart? Yeah. It's funny you should say that. I was actually talking about this with Mommy the other day. You were going to buy one? Well, maybe. What kind of go-kart? Like a single person? No, oh, I'm two-seater, so you can <laughs> Take your around. One at least a six horsepower engine. Why? What's so good about a six horsepower? It goes faster and it has better grip. Like torque. Oh, really? <laughs> torque. Yeah. Torque. All right, cool. It's wonderful to actually see you taking that bike ride with Noah. I'm liking what I'm seeing, and it's a really good start to healing your relationship with him. Very pleased here. We'll move on to the next piece here. Please. Oh, honey, it's all the way over here. Still not eating it. Noah. I'll eat something later. Noah, you didn't eat enough. Hey, Noah. You're not hungry? 
No, I'm not. You cannot tell that. What I'm trying to do is have a conversation with you, and I want to establish that we both understand each other. Ask me a question, get it answered. Okay, so, so you're not what I'm hearing is you're not hungry. We're going to have ice cream okay. after we're done with our dinner. Fine. You will not be having ice cream. Fine. You're understanding that? Yeah. Okay. What I'm pleased to see is how you've composed yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge difference. You were very patient and matter of fact. Oh, well, good. All right. The way that was handled. What a difference, Chris. Thank what you. a difference. And the fact that you've stepped up is, is incredibly promising. And only your hard work in continuing to be conscious of the way you behave and how you deal with it is what is going to lead to successful parenting and certainly a much more happier marriage. Absolutely. <laughs> You're feeling that way, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Mum's discipline. You're being a no. sport. Do not hit him. Do not hit. This is your warning. If you hit him again, you will go to timeout, Alexa. Yeah, don't chase her. Your turn. Don't. <laughs> now she has to go to timeout. You're in timeout because I told you not to hit, and you hit Ryan again anyway. You're in timeout for four minutes. Nice. I think I'm getting it. I'm just going to check on her. You need to stay seated, honey. Oh. <laughs> Mommy put you in timeout, so Mommy's going to take you out. I'm just telling you to stay seated. All right, thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. I just was seeing no. she was up right now. You're classifying her and you're thanking her. Without no. being toasted. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> It's so funny. You can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> you can't help yourself. Look, let's talk about the serious side of that. Yeah. yeah. This kind of interfering is undermining mum in a big way. Right. You have to allow Joy to discipline and hold that authority in front of you as an equal. And these kids need to see that so that they respect Joy. So no undermining, OK? OK. Let's continue with discipline. Alexa, your timeout is over. You were in timeout because I told you not to hit and you hit Ryan anyway. Can you say you're sorry? Can you give me a hug? Joy, that was a very good example of doing the naughty step and following through with the steps. Warning, follow through, hugs and kisses, let's move on. Thank you. So I'd like to acknowledge that there's been some really, really good work here some really, really good work. But there's still stuff that we do need to work on because when I leave, you don't have somebody saying, hold on a minute, you have each other. And it's how you support one another. That's going to be incredibly important. Right. The Potter family have truly made a lot of progress. And although some of that behaviour has been incredibly negative, I think it's about time that this family started to acknowledge the positives going on. So, what I have here are paper chains, because we are going to make chains of acknowledgement. We are going to write down what we see as being better. And when we write that down, we are then going to make a chain. Let me tell you, you're going to have a nice, healthy chain awesome, in a couple of months. Really long. Noah, name one thing that you've seen in this house that's different because it's better now. No more yelling. No more yelling. Chris. What have you seen? Happy kids. You've got to write it down on your chain. They all had a chance to voice what they felt was really good about the family right now. Seemed like all the kids right away were really excited about the acknowledgement chain. They all wanted to have a part in it and to build their own piece of the chain. And I think they're thrilled. You guys are doing so well. We absolutely will continue writing down all the good things that happen. I mean, everybody, you know, wag your finger at you when you're doing something wrong, but it's really great to hear when you're doing something good. Ooh, look at it already. Look at that. That's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. I think it's going to be a great thing for this family to actually do this acknowledgement chain and start to just make it longer and longer. I do still have one more important job to do, and that's to make sure that both mum and dad can reach out to one another so they can be solid as a couple. I feel like we're in a different place at the moment. We're in a much different place. 
we're, we're both just, everybody's happier. Like a black cloud that's mm -hmm. gone away. How do you feel about going in and acknowledging to Chris how the work he's put in has made an impact on you? I think it would mean a lot to him. They certainly have worked very hard together and they've been willing to work towards making everything much better than what it was. Well, can I interrupt you for a minute? Yes, you may. <laughs> um, I just wanted to tell you that... Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I'm really, really proud of you. Because you have shown me the man that I always knew that you could be. You've changed already so much. And I really am so proud of you. Oh, thank you, honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was really great to hear Joy say that she saw the improvements that I had made in my attitude and even though she was crying, it was a good feeling. I see the, the difference already, too. Mm -hmm. And it feels good. I think Chris is a very wonderful example of how you can change old behavior patterns that have been festering for years if you actually make up your mind that you're ready to make that change. All right, now you've got the nanny crying, because now that's it. <laughs> Show the tissues now, we Siri. love you. Oh, my <laughs> word. I'm more tearful and emotional. I'm so happy for you both. Seriously? Thank you. Like... Seeing Jo get choked up really, really touched the both of us. And for her to be able to see that what she did really worked and uh, really, really helped us and really changed us, um, it was very powerful. Compose yourself, Joe. You still have work to do. <laughs> now you go on these emotional journeys with these families, you know, you feel so much empathy and compassion and you really want it to work out. I don't want hey. to say goodbye. I know, I know. It's been so great that you came here. Thank you. Goodbye, Joe. I can't thank you enough for the tough love that you gave me. <laughs>